Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are in the world. It is it is my pleasure to uh, invite you for the HVDC circuit breaker demonstration today. Uh, my name is René Smeets. I'm working with with Kima Innovation, and the other member of the team is Nadu Belda, who is in charge of test circuits. Roy Nijman, who is actually doing the test, and Sjoerd Gesthuizen, who is uh, hosting the event from ICT point of view. Um, our uh, menu for today is uh, after a short introduction. For my part, we will uh, give the word to the specialist of Cybreak to let them tell some details about the VSC assistance resonant current breaker that they have developed. Uh, then uh, we will speak a little bit about testing of HVDC breakers in promotion. We will show you, of course, a live full short circuit current test 12 kA at 80 kV. Uh, then we will uh, give you a very short guidance of the lab and also a circuit breaker tour. So you will see a little bit more details about the device we test. Uh, of course, we come back to an evaluation of the test because we want to know, of course, how successful the test was. Well, not unimportant to mention, there is a Q&A session at the end. So please, if you have any question that you want to direct to anybody of us, please use the chat function on MS Teams. Well, the organization that is uh, hosting the event is the Chessy Group, and uh, let me give a very brief introduction of the activities that we have. Chessy Group is a global player in engineering, testing, and power system consultancy. 2,000 people are at work, which is about equally divided between the, the testing and the consultancy group. Well, uh, as you see from the map, we have a very large global presence uh, in the world. Well, I would like to focus on the labs because we are in the lab now. And uh, uh, for, the, for that reason, I would like to mention that in Chessy Group, there are basically uh, six labs for testing and certification of low, medium and high voltage equipment. Um, there is a lab in Chelford, United States. There is a lab in Berlin, in Germany. There is a lab in Mannheim. Um, there is a lab at our headquarter buildings in Milano. And there is also a lab in Prague. But the lab we are staying in today is the Arnhem HPL lab because that is the lab where the DC circuit breaker testing is directed from. Um, let me go to uh, the labs in a little bit more detail. Um, speaking about the assets of the lab, we have uh, um, uh, in, in the order of 1000 professionals at work. Uh, we issue around 2000 certificates per year. Uh, not unimportant that the, we have a very large uh, short circuit power in house that is uh, for total labs in the order of 30,000 MVA. Um, we will see soon that uh, we need quite a big portion to do today's test because the importance of circuit breaker testing is having megawatts available and not MVARs like in AC circuit breakers. Um, the products we offer are in the field of uh, testing services for uh, product development and innovation as well. So I mentioned to you the test labs we are having. Uh, we have a bunch of on-site test services as well, uh, inspections and product certification, as well as digital labs and smart technologies. Um, focusing a little bit more into the labs, um, the uh, high power labs uh, are um, basically intended to test uh, short circuits withstand and switching capability of uh, high voltage and medium switch gear. Uh, we are able to test circuit breakers, AC breakers up to uh, UHV levels of 1200 kV. Uh, from the high voltage point of view, the dielectric test, uh, it is clear uh, a lot of cable testing has been done there since uh, we have a lot of uh, HVDC guys live. I think it is good to mention that uh, we have the largest HVDC certification lab uh, here with three cable pre-qualification test base for cables up to 550 kV DC in our lab in Mannheim. 
Well, apart from that, uh, we have uh, no less than 15 different low voltage test labs and uh, a number of these test labs are able to perform a DC uh, uh, breaker or DC withstand test, but at, at the level of around 1 kV. Well, let me then uh, jump to um, this slide, which shows the end products of most of our work, not of today's work. We are not going to certify an AHV-DC brew breaker, but uh, in most cases, the end product of a test is a so-called chemotype test certificate. Well, we have three flavors of them in gold, silver, and gray. And uh, since, this, since this is a very well-known document in the world, it is a very good tool to bring your product to the market. Well, then we jump to the other important player in this field, that is the European project uh, Promotion. Promotion is a very large European project in the Horizons 2020 program of EU in which, in this case, uh, 34 partners work together to uh, come to a, a deployment plan of offshore HVDC grids. So the common denominator of all the work that is being done in promotion is offshore HVDC grids. Well, uh, 40 million euros are involved in, in that and uh, it is about to finish, so within uh, uh, one month we'll, we will finish the uh, EU promotion project. Well, time is, is too short to go into all of the details of the different tasks, the different work packages as we call them. So what I would just like to mention is that uh, we are today looking at the uh, final results of work package 5 and work package 10, which is on the actual demonstration of HVDC circuit breakers. Well, you might ask, why do we need to devote so much time and money on testing of HVDC breakers? Uh, we will have, uh, uh, in a later stage of today's program, we will explain that to, to you. Well, if you look to the, to the, to the, to the, to the program, you can see that um, uh, a great variety of, of different tasks is being worked out. So it's not only tasks which are on a, on a technical field, but also from finance and regulation point of view, uh, quite some work is being done. Uh, soon I will show you how to uh, get much more information on the results of the project. Well, um, this is not the first HVC circuit breaker demo we uh, are uh, running in the past two years. So in the in the photos at the left hand side, you can see uh, a demo we did in June uh, last year with the Mitsubishi 160-200 kV uh, HVDC circuit breaker. In the center, you see the ABB 350 kV uh, hybrid type of uh, HVC circuit breaker. We did it in the beginning of this year. You see, at that point in time, we could uh, invite people to attend the test. So that is the reason why today we are uh, in a live stream. Well, what is on the program today is the, the, the rightmost test object is the Cybrake test. And uh, we are going to tell you uh, more about that. And we are also going to show you how that device will perform, of course. Well, um, important to know, um, I would like to make some advertisement for the uh, final dissemination activities of the promotion project. I'm not going to read this all. Maybe it's good to mention that you do. You also do not need to write something down because we will record this whole live stream, but I think you can also get availability in PDF version of that. Well, uh, important to mention is next Monday we have it and at the e Sigre event, we have a forum in which we present a number of HVDC grid technologies, including HVDC breakers, but of course in much more detail and in much more width than we are going to do it now. Um, then the, then uh, in the first weeks of September, we have so-called breakout sessions planned. That means on 
each four of the technology tracks of the tracks uh, promotion tracks you are seeing we are first on the mondays that are in the in the rightmost column we are making recordings available uh, of about one hour that give much more detailed information on grid technology, on technology qualification, on regulatory matters, on grid planning stuff and so forth. Well, at the end of that, of each week, so September 4, 11 and 18, we will have a live session uh, for which sessions that you can join in and you can ask questions and learn more about the specialists that made their recordings before. Well, then it will boil down to a final conference on September 21st, in which we invited uh, a number of external speakers, but also here in this case, uh, we report on the, the main progress that this uh, uh, major EU pro project has made. So please register yourself at the website below, which is very easy. Just in Google type in promotion and offshore and you will uh, reach that point. Well, to give you a little bit of uh, locational awareness, uh, where are we and uh, what are we doing? Because in the normal, uh, um, uh, uh, in the normal events that in which people can join, we have a tour around the lab. Well, we don't have it now. So what I will try to do is to show you where we are. We uh, we are at the Arnhem High Power Lab, at the Kima High Power Lab. Uh, the main source of power, high power it, it, it seems, is in the generators. So we have six generators that is generating the power that we need for a test. And we are going to use today three of them for the Cybrick test. Well, we need to boost up the voltage of this, that device. So we have a large array of test transformers that are doing this. Um, we have uh, a number of main power labs. So one of the main high power labs you can see uh, right here. So that is the lab we are actually working in now. There is also a dedicated medium voltage lab. There is an outdoor test site. Uh, there is a synthetic insulation for the higher voltages of AC breakers. Uh, there is a UHV synthetic installation for the 800 and above rated voltage class of H, uh, H, uh, HVAC breakers. We have a large high voltage lab. Um, we have, um, uh, uh, well, I mentioned to you, we have a number of generators. Here you can see one in recent years, we have installed two new ones and, and also we added a number of uh, test trend, trend, transformers. The main reason to test transformers on board of a ship up to the 800 kV class. Well, what are we going today? What you see in the, in the bottom left hand side is an artist impression of the Cybrake test device. We placed that Cybrake breaker inside of the main test hole here, and that is where the where where the party that we are in today is going on. Well, uh, then I think uh, now it's time to uh, uh, let the specialist from Cybrake uh, tell a little bit more. So we are going to uh, change speaker now, and I invite Thomas Modier to uh, join the floor. <clears throat> yes, hello. Um, uh, I will, uh, together with Simon, here, try to explain the most important uh, points of the Cybrick uh, VARC circuit breaker topology. Um, VARC stands for Voltage Source Assisted uh, Resonant Current. And in the picture here, you see an 80 kilovolt VARC demonstrator that we will see in operation a little bit later. Uh, so Cybrick is a fairly small company with around four full-time employees uh, with offices in the lab just outside of Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, the company was founded in 2014 as a spin-out from uh, KTH Royal Institute of Technology by uh, Lennart Enqvist and Staffan Norga. Um, this uh, figure here at the bottom shows an uh, 
overview of the development process of the VARC technology. So first in 2015 and 2016, the, the VARC concept was evaluated with uh, um, different topologies and control methods uh, investigated. And then in 2017, the uh, interruption current uh, and uh, transient interruption voltage was increased up to 10 kiloamps and 20 kilovolts. And then in 2018, a uh, 10 kiloamp, uh, 40 kilovolt TIV module uh, was uh, tested here at KEMA. Uh, since then, uh, the focus has been on making the breaker faster and on the series stacking of uh, modules in order to reach higher voltages. So today we have a three module uh, breaker with the rated voltage of 80 kilovolts with around 120 kilovolt TIV and it can interrupt up to 12 kiloamps in less than two milliseconds. Uh, so now I will try to explain uh, how this works. Uh, so here we have a schematic of the, the VARC topology together with some stylized uh, waveforms on the right hand side. So uh, the VARC topology consists of a main current branch uh, seen at the top followed by an energy absorption branch and a uh, current injection or resonant current uh, branch. So in normal operation, the, the current is carried uh, by uh, through a residual current switch and what we call a main interrupter. Uh, so the main interrupter um, is the, the interrupter that does the actual interruption, whereas the residual current switch uh, just opens after everything interesting is already has already happened. So the main interrupter uh, is a vacuum interrupter and as such it cannot interrupt the DC current. Uh, so therefore we help it by uh, uh, injecting an opposing current uh, thereby producing a zero current crossing in the in the VI current. At this point, the VI uh, can extinguish the arc and uh, then hopefully uh, withstand the subsequent uh, voltage applied to it. After the interruption, the, the current um, will continue to flow through the uh, resonant circuit, the inductor and capacitor and voltage source converter until the capacitor is charged to the knee point of the surge arrestor. And at this point, uh, the uh, current will flow through the search arrestor and the opposing or the voltage uh, produced by it will will drive down the, the line current uh, and uh, uh, eliminate the fault. Um, <clears throat> uh, so this um, oscillation business, um, it seems like it can take uh, quite a long time, but how long time does it actually take? Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, if we take a look, closer look at the excitation, we can see that uh, uh, the current is really the response of the series resonant circuit um, to the square wave voltage waveform produced by the voltage source converter. So if we look at the first step, um, the amplitude um, when we apply a voltage step to the series resonant uh, tank, uh, we will get a sinusoidal current response. And the amplitude of that response is just uh, the amplitude of the voltage applied divided by the characteristic impedance of the uh, resonant uh, circuit. And then if we apply a second voltage step, uh, that uh, current response that we get from it will um, will be added to the response from the first step or superposition to it. So if we do this correctly, we will get a first volt, uh, current peak at some amplitude and then the, a negative uh, current peak of twice that amplitude. And, and then if we apply a third uh, voltage step, uh, we will further increase the uh, current amplitude. So we will get uh, positive current peaks of amplitudes in the ratio one, three, five, seven, and so on, and, and negative current peaks uh, of two, four, six, eight, and so on. And this means that regardless of what line current we would like to interrupt, we will have a, 
a uh, resonant current that fairly closely matches that line current. And we will have a zero, cross, uh, zero current crossing in the VI with uh, very little overshoot in the resonant circuit current. And this is beneficial for the interruption process. So the, the resonant frequency used is typically around 10 kilohertz. So even if we aim for very fast current interruption, we still have time for, for quite many um, resonant frequency periods uh, within that short um, interruption process. So I will now hand over to my colleague at Cybreak, uh, Simon Nier, which will uh, talk a little bit more about the details of the uh, demonstrator that we will see later on. Hello, my name is Simon Nier. Now we'll talk a bit about the demonstrator. Let's see which button is uh, the next slide here. Try the down. Okay, now oh. now it works. So yes, my name is Simon Nier, and I will tell a bit more about the demonstrator that is going to be tested today. On the picture, you see uh, one of the modules that uh, comprises the demonstrator. One of these modules weighs about 500 kilograms. It puts up a 40 kilovolt TID during interruption, and it takes about two milliseconds to operate. The peak interruptible current is 12 kiloamps, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's stackable, and it, it, it fits within a 1.5 by 1.5 meter footprint. The main components of the module are highlighted in the, in the picture. And uh, in the next following slides, I will uh, go into a bit more detail about these components. The first on the list is, of course, the vacuum interrupter and actuator. To the right, you can see the, uh, the actuator assembly that we use in this demonstrator. In the middle is a, is a vacuum interrupter that is a commercially available VI. The actuator itself is a known design based on Thomson coils as the main force generating elements. This, this actuator provides a separation time which is lower than two milliseconds. In addition to this device, we will also need a, a box which contains low voltage capacitors and making switches to actually drive the actuator. Another big part of the breaker is the resonance circuit. It consists of one or several capacitors and an air core inductor of own design. For, for this uh, resonance circuit, many types of capacitors can actually be used since the stresses on the resonance circuits is, is very low. Uh, this is because the voltage across the resonance circuit is zero in normal operation. The relatively high frequency of oscillation it also makes the components quite small. The voltage source converter, it's uh, depicted here on the sli this slide. There are some more structural elements that are part of the actual demonstrator, but uh, for clarity, those have been excluded in this, uh, this picture. We use uh, commercial off-the-shelf IGBT modules and uh, a known uh, uh, <coughs> PCB bus bar. The gate drivers are also of own design, but can be readily ordered from any manufacturer. The VC output voltage is in the range of 1 to 5% of the TIV of the module that it's mounted in. That gives uh, an idea about how much semiconductor is required. The current ratings, of course, will vary depending on how much current will have to flow in the resonant circuit. We use uh, film capacitors as the, as the capacitor bank, which uh, contains the energy that is required to energize the resonant circuit in the breaker. These capa this capacitor bank needs to store the charge or the energy required for uh, maybe two operations if the breaker is rated for an OCO cycle. The IGBTs in the VARC uh, circuit breaker switch around zero current, 
and this is very good for uh, for the IGBTs because the um, there will be very low over voltages at switching, and we will also have uh, low losses. Uh, since we have capacitor banks in the breaker, we will of course need to charge them and uh, that requires auxiliary power. In the demonstrator, we have used uh, high voltage isolation transformers because that option seemed to make the most sense for, for this application. The e each module has its own transformer. They're depicted to the right in the slide. A solution with uh, switched capacitors uh, could also be used if, if the breaker consists of many more modules. A major design decision at Cybreak has been to, to divide the circuit breaker into many modules. There are several benefits to this approach. For instance, we can construct one module or we can design one module and then test that design very carefully and then use that module to design breakers of various voltages. Another benefit is that if uh, for some reason there's a failure in one module, the remaining modules can, can still interrupt the fault. And, uh, and th this type of redundancy is a uh, gra graceful degradation. So, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, in the figure to the right, you can see how the TIV waveforms rise during an operation. There, there could be some steps that if there is a slight variation in operation time of the, of the modules. But uh, the, the, time, the time difference in the op module operating time should be between a few tenths to a few hundreds of microseconds. As part of any development, there is a lot of testing. So uh, here in the, the bo bottom plot here shows uh, uh, part of the acceptance testing program that we carried out before shipping these modules to the Kema. We interrupt uh, 12.4 kiloamps, 11.7 kiloamps and 10.4 kiloamps in our laboratory. Five interruptions per, per module per, per duty to verify uh, proper functioning of the, of the module. The semiconductors used in the voltage source converters are also tested. We have uh, the, the ones that we use now, we have tested uh, uh, quite extensively with uh, bo both high stress tests and long term tests. The actuator has been tested for hundreds of operations per actuator and uh, the previous generation of actuator, which uh, uh, is quite similar to this one, uh, has been tested for thousands of operations uh, where, where the oper the functionality of the VI was also uh, verified after thousands of operations. So now let's go into a few advantages of the VARC type of circuit breaker. Uh, a first, uh, first on the list should be that uh, we use a, a relatively low amount of semiconductor, which brings down the cost but we still keep the controllability of the circuit breaker. We also have modularity, which uh, uh, brings means to implement fault tolerance with a graceful degradation. In the, the, the pictures below, they show two 320 kilovolt breakers. The, the one to the left is a, is a concept rendering, and the one to the right is a photoshopped picture. Uh, it, it's a picture of the, our demonstrator in the lab with a few more modules copied into the picture to give an idea of how a 320 kilovolt breaker could look like. Of course, there will be have to be longer post insulations, insulators in the bottom and uh, maybe shields, etc. But uh, the size is, is still an indication. So more advantages of ARC are that uh, there is an automatic adaptation of the current pulse amplitude to the line current level. That is, uh, since we successful, uh, successively increase the oscill oscillation current amplitude, as Thomas, Thomas mentioned earlier, the injected current is always quite similar to the uh, current that is going to be interrupted, and that is good for the vacuum interrupter. We also get uh, bidirectionality uh, right away. 
So if you construct a VARC circuit breaker for, for uh, at all, you get bidirectionality because the, the injected current goes in both directions and the rest of the construction is also entirely bidirectional. Some further advantages are that uh, there's only one vacuum interrupter in the normal current path per module. We have very low stress on passive components in normal operation. We use uh, standard off-the-shelf <coughs> components for the most part, that is, except the actuator construction and uh, a few PCBs. The converter commutates a zero current, which uh, again is very good for dimensioning of the of the uh, IGBTs. The operation is independent of line voltage before fault. That is, if this, if the circuit breaker is is armed, it's ready for interruption no matter what. And uh, it can also be designed for faster closing if needed. That is all for for us. Uh, thank you for your attention. I think uh, now Nadiu Belda will present a bit more about the tests. Let's see. Hello, uh, my name is Nadio Balda, uh, also from Chemalabs Innovation. Well, before we go into the big show of today, I would like to say a few words about how do we perform testing of HVDC circuit breakers. Well, uh, the outline of my presentation is just a brief introduction to the challenge of testing HVDC circuit breakers as compared to AC circuit breakers. And at Chemalabs, we have worked on uh, methods uh, which can su successfully be uh, used for testing uh, DC circuit breakers. And then, of course, we have worked with uh, colleagues in promotion to define test programs. Uh, and then I summarize my presentation. Uh, well, uh, just to say a few words before uh, the start of promotion project, there is not much known about the requirements of HVDC circuit breakers uh, to which we refer to to define uh, test methods or test circuits. So we have to work on uh, a kind of a hypothetical DC grid uh, system studies so that we know what is happening in actual uh, DC grid to define the requirements in, in a test lab. Just to give a highlight of the differences between AC and DC current interruption, and here you see a, a, a kind of diagram showing AC current interruption. So if there is a fault happening in AC grid, that will be followed by a rising uh, current. And of course, the protection system has to detect this fault and tell the AC circuit breaker to interrupt. The AC circuit breaker can only interrupt on a current zero, which is natural, which is happening naturally in AC systems. And immediately after current interruption, this circuit breaker will be subjected to uh, a voltage from the system, which is called TRV. If I just try to summarize what I said, AC circuit breaker is a passive component. In a way, it cannot determine the peak fault current in a system. So that means it's determined by system components and parameters. And also it cannot determine what transient voltage can occur in the system. This is also imposed by the system in which it is installed. If we look at the time duration, uh, the, the time frames at which short circuit current and voltage are occurring, they are separate, basically what you see in red and in, in black actually. And we can supply this from two different sources in a synthetic manner, the so-called synthetic testing for AC circuit breaker, which may not be directly applicable for DC circuit breaker testing. Here on, on the right side, you see a, a kind of waveforms for DC uh, fault current interruption. So when a DC fault occurs, then that will be, of course, followed by a collapse of the system voltage and the short circuit current will rise to a steady state DC value. It's not oscillating, there is no current zero. That means a DC circuit breaker has to find a way to uh, uh, stop this current from uh, further rising, otherwise it will be damaging system components. Just to show you the differences here, when a circuit breaker is uh, interrupting a DC fault, it has to produce a counter voltage which must be higher than the system voltage in which it is installed. Only if such condition is fulfilled, a, a rising fault current will start to suppress. 
to uh, reduce, as you see it in this diagram with red uh, solid line. That means when a voltage and a current are appearing at the same time through a breaker, the breaker is actually absorbing megajoules of energy from the system. Therefore, summarizing this, uh, 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 a DC circuit breaker must be active. That means it must act fast. It's in a way, it determines what fault current will be appearing in a system. And also it produces its own voltage, which means it's independent of the system. Although, of course, it must be higher than the system voltage. From testing perspective, you need to have a facility or a, a, an infrastructure that can supply sufficient amount of energy to be able to test DC circuit breaker. That's the main challenge, and then that we were, that's what we have been working uh, here in commotion. So, uh, Kemala, at, as part of uh, promotion partner, of course, uh, we worked on developing a test method. Our test method uh, is based on existing infrastructure. Uh, which is based on low frequency AC short circuit generators. Naturally, you would think of uh, testing DC circuit breaker using a high power DC source, which is not available anywhere in any test facility in the world. So we have to find an alternative but adequate solution, uh, which I'm going to explain to you. So if you operate a short circuit generator at low power frequency, for example, at 16.7 Hertz, you will get a voltage which will stay positive for about 30 milliseconds as you see it here. And if you cut out a time window from, uh, from this voltage, which you see it as an opportunity window, we call it, you, you will see this, this voltage will stay more or less DC or more or less within certain percentage of the peak value for sufficient duration because DC circuit breakers actually operate quite fast. In this case, you can get more than 80% of the voltage for about 15 milliseconds. And if you can apply a short circuit at certain point on this voltage, you can get a fast rising short circuit current, the rate of rise of which is determined by the impedance in the system, which we can add in our test circuit. And then of course, a circuit breaker is expected to stop, a DC circuit breaker is expected to stop this rising fault current and suppress it instead by producing a counter voltage. That's what you see a dashed black uh, trace here in the bottom graph. In doing so, an HVDC circuit breaker, of course, absorbs energy from the system, which is equivalent to the uh, energy in the field, which we have calculated from a system study. But of course, there are challenges of using this method. The method depends on running short circuit generators at low power frequency, that means the power available for uh, testing reduces uh, in square proportion with frequency. That means you have to use multiple short circuit generators in parallel. Also, the voltage output uh, in at low power frequency reduces proportional to uh, the same frequency, which means you need to use multiple short circuit transformers to bring back the voltage to the desired level. At Chemolabs, we could use up to six short circuit generators in parallel and up to 10 step up transformers in series to be able to test DC circuit breakers up to, which can be rated up to 500 kV. Another challenge which I did not mention uh, of testing a DC circuit breaker is not only be able to supply a short circuit power, but also to be able to handle the stress that is coming from a DC circuit breaker. As an example, a 500 kV HVDC circuit breaker will produce it, uh, uh, its own voltage of about 800 kV. That means you have to have a system which can handle that voltage. That is also uh, quite a challenge. That is what we have been working on. Well, what I just presented is, of course, the core, the power source for uh, DC circuit breaker testing, but that's not it. There are a lot of other features and parts of a circuit which needs to be fulfilled for, to perform uh, uh, to perform the testing of HVDC circuit breaker. Here you see the power source. I have described that, including short circuit generators and transformers with uh, uh, important switches. Uh, of course, the method will produce quite large current. The current that rises to much higher than that can be interrupted by the DC circuit breaker. So if that current flows through the breaker, it might damage. So we have a protection that can make sure the current will not go into the test object, which is an HVDC circuit breaker, if such a situation occurs. That's what you see an overcurrent circuit in this uh, blue uh, rectangle. Then there are other features. Uh, you will see that also during the test, uh, we can apply a kind of load-like current before the application of a short circuit, which can be uh, used during the test. 
And of course, the test object, the HVDC circuit breaker, is expected to clear the rising fault current at some point. That is what you see with this green uh, sketch. By producing a counter voltage, the TIV, which is must be sufficiently, is sufficiently higher than system voltage. We note this voltage. Of course, we, as a test facility, we don't produce this, but we note during a test its magnitude and duration because that determines the energy in the system. And finally, when the, the circuit breaker clears a fault, the system will apply a voltage from the recovered system. That means we also have to apply that voltage in a synthetic way from a separate source. Together, we see critical stages of DC current interaction. Here you see four stages. The first one is internal current commutation. That means the circuit breaker will receive a trip order and does its internal job to make sure the current stops at one point. So this is a measure of the speed of operation of DC circuit breaker. Then, of course, the circuit breaker generates this TIV I just mentioned of sufficient magnitude and duration. And then the third step is absorbing energy from the system. And finally, it will have to withstand the DC uh, voltage from the system. So in our test, we apply all these stresses in, in one go. So in one test shot, you will get all these stresses at the same time. So in promotion, uh, of course, we've been working uh, on the last uh, three, four years about this. So we have to come up with what are the important tests that we have to perform in order to demonstrate uh, the rated performance of HVDC circuit breakers. So we found out the most important tests are the maximum current interrupting capability and the lowest current that can be interrupted by a DC circuit breaker. So we define low current, we call it TC10, for, uh, uh, for example, continuous current of 10% of load current. And then the, the circuit breaker also be able to stop the load current or the nominal current. And TF100 is the maximum short circuit current that can be interrupted by a DC breaker. And today that is what you see in the demo. So the, uh, the test we, which we are going to show you will be a 12 kA current interruption in about two milliseconds by an HVDC circuit breaker from the Cybre. So just summarizing, uh, well, uh, I would like to say uh, the focus of promotion is of course not uh, a proof of concept or pro product development. We were actually focusing on rated performance demonstration. For that, we identified critical stage, which I mentioned, so uh, the four stages uh, uh, previously mentioned. And a test must be able to apply all the critical stage in one go. That is what we have uh, designed uh, in KEMA as part of promotion project. And that test method uses uh, AC short circuit generators running at low power frequency. That is in short what I wanted to present about testing. Of course, uh, from now on, we will go into uh, the actual testing and I think uh, you will be directed into the test hall while the test is going on. Thank you from uh, my side, yeah. Yeah, okay. So so you, you will now see a test hall. Uh, Right here, you see a test object, uh, uh, which is which the camera is pointing to now uh, in our test hall. Uh, and our colleagues are preparing to do a, a shot, actually. So in that test, uh, basically in a couple of minutes, a test will be coming. Uh, uh, just to uh, yeah inform you, uh, the test involves some uh, flashing of lights because we use a lot of spark ups in the test. So and if you are Lucky to hear, there are also sounds that can uh, come to you. Uh, yeah, and then uh, here you see the complete overview of uh, the test uh, uh, installation, the test hall. Later, uh, my colleagues, uh, together with uh, colleagues from Cybrec, will uh, explain to you in detail uh, the test object uh, on the right side and also parts of our test installation, which I just described. So the preparation is going on now. Uh, you can few moments uh, you will uh, hear, you will see in this uh, uh, video what is going on. Yeah, all the things are set, so of course uh, uh, it's not uh, just uh, pushing one button, everything has to be prepared. Uh, so just have patience, uh, you will see uh, it coming soon. Here, uh, our test engineer, yeah. So our test engineer is ready, the operator is ready to carry out the test. 
Ready? Go to the next one. Take it. Lost you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everything has to be coordinated to make sure it can be carried out uh, as planned. Okay, we are ready to perform the test. Okay, test is coming soon. Okay, next test will be a full test of cooperation. Yeah. Okay, coming. Yeah. That's just, just the sound that you heard of testing and also the flashing uh, of our spark up. So the test just happened. So uh, later I will show you the test results. I think uh, just before that uh, we will go into uh, into the test hall to explain to you the different parts of uh, the test installation, the test object uh, by Simon and also by my colleague, a test engineer Roy Neiman will explain to you the uh, test circuit. Thank you. Yeah, OK. So in a moment, you will get a, a, a demonstration of the test hall, test components. Hi, Ron, and I'm a test engineer at Team Alex. In this tour, we show you the test circuit used for the testing of the DC circuit breaker for Cybrick. First, we have a look at the test object itself, which will be further explained by the people of Cybrick. The voltage across the test object is measured with a mobile voltage divider. The supply is coming from this side through the wall bushing, through the bus bar, then through the auxiliary breaker, AB1, to the top of the test object. The return path is from the bottom of the test object, through this coaxial shunt, then going back to the other side of the rail and passing through the red wall bushing. Also connected across the supply is this bypass protection circuit, consisting of a triggered spark gap, which will bypass the short circuit current in case of an overcurrent or another calamity, therefore protecting the test object. When we look at the other side of the test hall, we see two reactors which are used in series to initiate a low level of current before the short circuit current is initiated. The voltage across these reactors is limited by this surge arrestor stack. At a certain moment, this triggered spark gap is shorting the reactors and therefore initiating the short circuit current, after which the test object will receive a trip command and will start to suppress the current. Hello, let's take a look at the BARC DC circuit breaker demonstrator. Here, next to me, these three units are the resonant circuit capacitors. And in the middle, bottom, we 
can see the circuit resistor itself. And on the top of it is the resonant circuit conductor. On the right hand side, you can see the VI and uh, its actuator assembly. The vacuum interrupter, the VI, is uh, quite similar here in the, in the middle. These three modules that we see, they are identical and also operate independently. They can be used as building blocks for making a circuit breaker with much higher voltage if uh, required. Let's take a look at the other side of the breaker. Here you have the auxiliary power transformers. There are three of them, each of them feeding their own circuit breaker module. In the aluminum enclosure here, you have the BSE taking up the bulk of the space on my right hand side here. And on the left, there is a rack which contains the control system and the drive box for the, the, the actuator. It also contains some power supply units. I think that is the, those are the main components of the circuit breaker. Thank you. Okay, so that was a description of the test object as well as uh, the installation. Uh, now I come back to the test result in a few moments. Yes, well, it was very quick. You saw it, there was a test uh, just happened. Here you see the test result. Uh, well, there are lots of measurements. I just focus on the most important part. Uh, you see the test current? Which, was, which started here uh, with a method we mentioned, then the short circuit is applied from this moment on. On this, the, on the bottom, you see the moment the test object, which is the HVDC circuit breaker, receiving a trip command at this point. From this moment on, we expect a circuit breaker to interrupt the fault current. That is what happened. So within about two milliseconds, you see it here, uh, about 1.9 millisecond, it could stop the current from further riding. In doing so, it interrupted around 12 kA. Uh, I will come back to a, a slide to show you the detail. Here, what we mentioned was very important that uh, the circuit breaker produces vo a voltage. The voltage can be seen from this red trace on the top. So the counter voltage, the TIV, uh, I can show you the value. The value of about 121 kV could be produced by this circuit breaker for about uh, 3.5 milliseconds, as you see it here. Uh, I would like to show you with uh, 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 a better graph. I think this must be okay. Yes, here. Yes, uh, what I would like to explain to you, I took a quick uh, action to uh, plot uh, the, the results here. Uh, that was the, uh, the prospective current. If the circuit breaker would not, wouldn't be operating, the circuit, uh, the circuit current will flow like this, like what you see it here, almost uh, about 33 kA or something. This can only be done by a DC circuit breaker. Had it been an AC circuit breaker, it will clear later at like 50, 60 milliseconds later. But in this case, a circuit breaker could clear. That's a test result with uh, 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 with a scale here, you could see about 12 kA could be stopped from riding. Otherwise, uh, in the previous slide, I show you the prospective current when the circuit breaker is not operating at all. And then, of course, it, it should produce a, a, a TIV, which was a voltage, a counter voltage exceeding the system voltage. The system voltage in this case is provided by a short circuit generator. And that's why the, circuit, the current is brought back to zero, as you see it here. That's exactly what you see uh, in this test result. So, yeah, basically that is uh, our, our, our demo of this test. And I will leave the floor for Rene now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Continue.
Thank you, Nadu. Uh, we are coming now to the, the last part of uh, today's event, which is the Q&A, because uh, we could imagine there were a number of questions which uh, need to be um, uh, answered, of course. Um, we, did not, uh, we did not receive too much yet. We have three questions on the list now. I'm looking to... Uh, uh, short whether there are, uh, so he, he can manage wh whether there are more. Um, first question from uh, Professor Dan Xu Heng from Shanghai on uh, what is the meaning of VARC? Well, I know it, but I would like to give the word to one of the specialists who have designed the word, uh, the, the, the word VARC. Uh, uh, my, my, my first impression when I heard the word, the name VAC was that it has something to do with AUX. Uh, of course, your circuit breaker is an ARCing device. Uh, it is it is a, it is a device which uses the ARC for the main current interruption, and for that reason, uh, and because it uses active current inter uh, active current injection, we would classify this breaker as an active current injection device, together with the earlier tested Mitsubishi active current injection device, which injects the current from a precharged capacitor. But maybe, Thomas, you can uh, assist me in uh, answering. Yep. Take, take, please, please take a chair. And uh, what, is, what is the meaning of VARC? So VARC uh, stands for Voltage Source Converter Assisted Resonant Current Injection Breaker. Uh, and we feel that uh, the use of a voltage source converter is very important in, in terms of the advantages you get. So that's why we want to stress it, and that's why we call it a, a VARC. But as you say, it's very uh, conceptually very similar to an active current injection. You, you mentioned that one of the advantages of the VARC breaker was the use of a minimum number of IGBTs. We know that in the the, the, the big Chinese circuit breakers and in, in the other hybrid designs, uh, a large number of IGPTs are being used. How would you compare the number of, let's say, a 320 kV uh, VARC breaker with a 320 kV uh, hybrid type of breakers? Can you give an order of magnitude? We are yeah. not waiting for any precise number. Yeah, but roughly one tenth, I would say. Ooh, one tenth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ten yeah. percent of. The Amount yeah. uh, you mentioned all also in your talk that you use uh, uh, commercial vacuum interrupters in your design, and um, uh, it's my understanding that these are commercial medium voltage type of vacuum interrupters. Do you have a plan of developing or thinking towards the use of high voltage vacuum? interrupter so that you can minimize the amount of modules? Uh, that would, of course, be very interesting. Uh, I think the, the vacuum interrupters we use now are performing quite well at this voltage level. So, but uh, of course, going forward, it will be very, very interesting to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, also, custom types of, of vacuum interrupters. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a question of resources as well, I, I would say. And, and what we thought the, 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 the speed of this breaker is extremely high, so you can open the breaker very fast and uh, make, make the counter voltage fast. And, and have you any idea whether you can maintain this speed if, if, if a bigger interrupter like a high voltage interrupter is being used? It's of course much harder to be as fast when you go up in, in both in voltage and also in current if you need every contacts that's been also be harder. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, the second question is coming from uh, Ben Marshall from uh, HVC Center in Scotland. Um, he would like to know uh, what is the function of the triggered spark gap components. Let me have a check what is the question exactly. Uh, can you describe the triggered spark gap component in the overcurrent protection circuit and its function when the overcurrent protection is not engaged? Uh, maybe I can ask Nadu to uh, shed some lights on this on this point. So yes. um, maybe with with the use of the oscillogram. Um. Uh, yes, the trigger spark up. Of course, uh, 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 there are two spark ups we are using. Uh, one is 
used at, uh, uh, to pr produce this short circuit current after we apply a load current. I think the question is uh, spark up that was used for overcurrent protection. Uh, the spark up is a kind of a parallel path to the test object uh, that is used to uh, take the current out of the test object in case something unexpected happens. It could be because there is a mistake, a kind of human error that uh, uh, a test is carried out without sending a trip command to the test object or the test object fails to interrupt the short circuit current. And we know a lot of HVDC circuit breakers are sensitive to overcurrents, so we wanted to protect against such a situation. And the function of this spark up, it stays there, but there is, of course, a triggering which requires a, a, a live monitoring of the current. So there is a level detector installed, which will look at what is exactly happening at any moment on the current trace. So if it senses overcurrent, then it will trigger that spark up. It's a plasma triggered spark up, which starts conducting when told. So it's not a passive device, it's relatively active there. Would you call these methods of overcurrent protection a disadvantage of testing with AC? Well, I wouldn't call it a disadvantage. It's a, it's basically an advantage, but uh, in any case, uh, of course, you don't have high power DC source, but in any case, if you are going to interrupt uh, 16 kA as an example, you must be able to produce current higher than that so mm -hmm. that you know the breaker or the device is operating. Yes, uh, yes. So but in any case, you need mm -hmm. to protect mm -hmm. against a uh, current above certain range. Of course, using short circuit generators at low power frequency might enhance a bit of uh, current than needed, but uh, mm -hmm. it, it can be protected as uh, we have demonstrated several times. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, then another question from uh, Ben Marshall from HVC Centre in Scotland is, uh, what about uh, testing for DC fault resistance? Uh, the testing that you have witnessed here was um, uh, a short circuit current breaking tests. So we feel that is the most important function of a circuit breaker and is also the most difficult function to build in and the most difficult function to test. But uh, of course, these breakers and any DC devices, in fact, should also be able to withstand a DC fault current and uh, even in close position. And um, uh, for that, of course, not a very large amount of power is needed as we have now, because for that case, there is not a very a large current is needed indeed, but not a very high voltage is needed for that. So that means the DC fault resistance test of any DC component, whether this is a DC bus bar or some other type of DC switch here can do, uh, can be done in much more simpler test circuits than the one you just uh, saw. Uh, it's it may be good to mention we are uh, working with an IEC team on a new standard and that standard will cover a number of uh, HVC switching devices, not only speaking about circuit breakers, but we are working also on standards uh, of uh, HVC, HVC transfer switches, HVC bypass switches, earthing switches. And for each of these devices, some clauses are under development on what what these devices should be able to withstand in terms of DC fault resistance. And uh, uh, we are working uh, in that field and we are also working towards testing yeah, yeah, these uh, yeah. devices. And just to add one point there actually is uh, in promotion. Uh, the focus is not to kind of do a type test. The focus is to demonstrate the performance of short circuit interruption actually. Yes. So that's why we focus, we limit it. I, when I was presenting, I, I put a slide showing the test program, which shows uh, the minimum current interruption capability to the maximum current interruption capability. That's the focus of this project. Of course, if you are planning to do a type test of an HVDC circuit breaker, there are much more testers which must be involved. Oh, yes but they are not very challenging. Standard test circuit can be used, for example, to measure uh, uh, temperature rise or, or uh, on-state resistance. All those kinds can be done with standard test circuit, but this short circuit interaction is special. That's why it was uh, focused. Yes, uh, because to add to that, the main reason why we focused on short circuit current interruption within promotion was 
that all of the present DC breakers that are under development and are actually commissioned in 500 kV pro projects, uh, they operate with standard components that are used in a non-standard way. Uh, you see here in the side break device, we have vacuum circuit breakers are being used, but these devices are standard off the shelf AC, D, uh, AC circuit breakers, AC yeah. vacuum interrupters. So in the design, it should be very carefully taken into account that the stresses that these vacuum interrupters will, uh, will feel are different from the standard application into an AC device. Well, the same for semiconductors. The semiconductors in a hybrid DC breaker have completely different stresses than semiconductor in an HVDC converter. And the same for the search arrestors. Normally, as you know, search arrestors are devices that, that are for overvoltage protection. Here, they are designed for energy absorption. So time is too short to go into detail. You yeah. find a lot of research into uh, into the promotion documents about that, but this is a very important point. Yeah, yeah. I think next questions are for uh, Sabre colleagues. Uh, wait. Um, uh, one question about design. How do you manage the voltage distribution across the separate interrupting units? In AC breaker, capacitors are used to have a voltage distribution across two interrupters. Is this also needed for DC breakers and your design? Simon, if you can shed some light, some thoughts about this. Yes, so um, uh, during the current suppression, of course, the, the surge arresters, they, they divide the voltage across the modules very evenly. And transiently, uh, just at uh, dur during interruption and, and, and the moments after current uh, zero, in the each interrupt, uh, interrupter, there are, there are other components which, uh, which which help out with the distribution. But mainly, I would say it's the the, the surge arresters in each module that clamp the voltage across the module. I think that's uh, yeah. Okay, well, that's well, fine. Thank yeah. you. Um, then we have a question from uh, uh, Doctor. Spiwak, uh, how the operational and maintenance issues look like? Do you recommend any inspection replacement intervals of components? That is uh, a very progressive question, I would say, uh, because there are a very few uh, HVDC circuit breaker in service yet. There are two smaller projects, two smaller Chinese projects in which 160 kV and 200 kV circuit breakers are in use. We try in, in our IEC and CGRA working groups to get as much as possible operational experience from that. But uh, Simon, if I look to you, do you already think of, of speaking about some operational and maintenance and supervision or uh, such, such time of, of more advanced, which are related to the in installation and operation of these devices in real service, I would say it's, it's a really uh, it's a really big question, and it's, it could take a very long time to answer it in, in detail. But I could say that that uh, the main components of the of the device is they are the the voltage source converter, for instance. It's a it's it's not a very strange thing. There are such devices already in in industry, and we have constructed them according to to standards. Uh, which, which apply mo the most closely to, to the converter that we have constructed, for instance. And that means that, that uh, uh, the maintenance is similar to what you would require of such converters. So, mm -hmm. so for that, that I think would be the, the best way to look at, at maintenance intervals, etc., is to, for each of the parts of the circuit breaker, go through the maintenance intervals of similar, similar apparatus in, already in use. Uh, and for, for the vacuum interrupter, there is very, there is very low stress on it, so so uh, because there is very low arcing time. Yes, and um, so that that is uh, yeah. one of the critical components, I think, and that is also one of the new, new components that you see only in this HVDC type of breakers are the very fast Thomson type of drives, because all HVDC breakers have to operate very fast. And uh, yours was the fastest that we have seen here. Uh, how 
what do you think on how can you assure that during the lifetime of a breaker, all these modules, if you especially if you speak about high voltage breakers in which maybe up to eight or maybe even 10 switching components with these high speed drives are used, how can you assure that during long duration, this also this mechanical part of breakers will function as desired? Of course, that's a very, uh... It's very important that they they do function the same over the lifetime of the of the device and uh, the, the the way i see to this is is a long-term testing of many many devices and that that would be we have we have done that with with uh, the previous generation of actuator but this one is is uh, relatively new this design so yes. we have not had simply have not had the time to go through the, the mm -hmm. The long time it takes to, to do long-term long testing, but it will also be, be done. The previous generation of actuator that we, we made uh, has, has been actuated in succession for, for, for uh, thousands of operations. I don't remember the exact number now for that generation, but I think it was around 2000. And after that, we, we used the same actuator for, for high current interruptions without issues. So, so uh, um, I think that is uh, the key, long-term testing. Yeah. Uh, because your message is, I think, if I if I if 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 I would translate it into testing or or, or uh, type testing point of view, your point is don't underestimate the mechanical stresses and try to be sure that they, that 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 you test these. So uh, a solid, a type test program also for the mechanical testing of these. HVDC breakers because all breakers, all HVDC breakers have mechanical switching components which are all hyper fast and new. So that's quite important, I guess. And I think you also have the same opinion. It's of course important. Uh, whether or not it should be part of a type test uh, program or not, I, I would leave that to, to breaker experts. Mm -hmm. So, but but uh, I think that uh, uh, it's surely important and and and. Uh, uh, we have done it with the, the actuators we have constructed so far. We will uh, do the long-term testing with it, this generation as well. Thank you. Um, then there is a question from uh, Case Platt. Case Platt is the is the technical coordinator of the of the promotion program. Uh, so uh, uh, please, uh, the qu the question from uh, Case is: uh, Could you give some insight into the operational aspects of this type of circuit breaker? E.g., does it have on-state losses, and what kind of maintenance requirement does it have in terms of planned annual maintenance outage duration? <clears throat> also, not the most easy question, but no. may maybe you can say something about on-state losses compared with other type of HVDC breakers or HVDC components. Yes, so the on-state losses are quite low. It's only the, the main VI in the current path. And then I guess you should also uh, count the, the auxiliary power. But, uh, it's it's quite low. I don't think. Few micro ohms per per gap. In yes. this in this case, we had a 40 kilovolt TIV per 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 uh, module. Yeah. So if it's a 320 kV breaker, it would be 12 modules then. Yes. And then t depending on the contact force, you uh, you would have different resistance in the interrupters. But uh, let's say we have 10 to 15 micro ohms per, per gap. So it is it is certainly not the case like in standard uh, hybrid breakers that have also power electronic components in the main path that active cooling is needed at some point in time or at some point in design. No active cooling. OK. And regarding the maintenance, I think that would depend very much on how much you operate the, the breaker. In, in normal operation, it doesn't do anything. Really. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the de-sealing uh, capacitors are charged, but that's the only, the only stress applied to, to any of the components, I would say. So I think monitoring how much, uh, uh, how many operations there has been and how much energy has been absorbed in the, in the search arrestor is uh, the most important thing in terms of maintenance. Is because one of the things that you mentioned before, Simon, was that this breaker is basically designed for multiple opening op operations. Yes. Um, uh, two aspects are involved there. First of all, there must be a multiple a possibility to have multiple opening of the main switching gap. 
and second, your search arrestor must be able to deal with the uh, increased stress, stress because the time for cool down after the first breaking is too short. It is it's too short to cool down. Yes, that's uh, that's true. And also the the voltage source converter needs to store the energy required to excite the resonant circuit uh, for operation. Okay, so and, it's what, those three what, that I mentioned. and what would you think uh, as an order of magnitude would be the shortest time between two subsequent operations? Mm. That, that would probably depend on the deionization time of all red lines, I would say. So, it, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, we could probably do uh, 100 milliseconds or so. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, that's it. it that, uh, uh, that, the actuator uh, is a uh, is one thing there, and then it's a re reclosure of the of the main breaker. So there is some uh, there is some uh, uh, design to this, but uh, it, it's possible to design for a much lower reclosure time than I think is uh, is required. And if if uh, if if somebody wants a even shorter reclosure time, I'm we uh, I'm sure we can uh, manage. OK, um, uh, one part of the breaker that has not been discussed yet is the, uh, the interrupting device that has to interrupt the very small current that is flowing through the uh, search arrestor after the main current has been in interrupted, the resi residual current breaking device. Mm. Um, one, one aspect of your design that struck me is that you are able to operate this device in a very short time. You're speaking about tenth of milliseconds. Can you say just a few words about that? Yes, uh, after interruption with a bark circuit breaker, there is a uh, low amplitude uh, uh, resonance between the uh, grid yes. and, uh, and the capacitors in the resonance circuit. Uh, this, is, this, uh, this current is low amplitude and, and, uh, and a few hundred hertz uh, uh, frequency. Mm -hmm. This is this can be interrupted with a with a standard uh, uh, with a standard breaker. A, a standard AC breaker can can be used as long as the the isolation is is uh, properly dimensioned for for DC stresses. Good. Then I would like to proceed to the next question. So please remain seated because there is also on the design. Uh, Case Coleman of Tenet asks: There are three modules working in working in series. What is the requirement on the synchronism of the oscillating currents in the individual modules? So no. the, <laughs> well, none is not really great. Uh, it's not that strict actually. So if you have a, a large uh, time difference between different modules, the, the energy will not divide evenly. So. Um, but it's it's not worse than that. And we actually, in this demonstration that you just saw, uh, we we can synchronize the modules down to the microseconds or so. But we have added a slight delay between the modules, uh, partly to get nice uh, waveforms to show because it's easier to see the different waveforms. Uh, and also uh, by opening one module at a time, we can reduce the uh, DVDT that is seen externally. So each module here is delayed by around 30 microseconds. So in the test that you just saw, the, the lowest module has maybe a percent more losses than the or energy absorption than, than the next module and so on. But it, it's, it's a very small difference. OK, thank you. Um, next question from uh, Mr. Mitra from Idaho National Lab. Uh, very impressive setup and demonstration. Thank you. and especially our team, of course. Uh, I must congratulate the team. Uh, I have worked with early fault detection using signal processing for HVDC breakers. Do you have any such plans for such testing in future? Uh, well, this is this is a question which which I, I, I cannot really answer. Uh, well, the, the, the real plain the real plain answer is no. So uh, we have no plans to 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 test fault detection methods for uh, uh, for HVDC grids, but I'm sure that when the HVDC becomes the HVDC grid technology becomes more 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 mature than it is now, there uh, will be a need, and we will ask our 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 labs who work with with protection system to include this type of protection as well. 
So uh, we have we have no plans to test this type of protection, HV, DC protection relays at this point in time, but we have the capability to do so. I think it's also related with if the breaker, if it's also part of the breaker. Like yeah, yeah, we have a high speed over current protection in the breaker. Actually, it was not used in this test, but uh, all the tests we do in our own lab, uh, the breaker is uh, self tripped at a certain current level. So uh, I'm not sure if we're going to test that further, but we use it in, in our development process. And it's not quite a natural way to test uh, an object that uh, the test object itself uh, does not know that the test is coming. That's uh, part of the reason we built it in. Yeah. We have to be selective of all the questions. It's a lot of questions. Oh. Yes, well, there is a, there is another one for Cybreak. What is the plan from Cybreak with this HVDC? Will this HVDC breaker only use for offshore issues? And only on high on high current faults, or also on land, if we think on DC multigrid and normal connection and disconnection operation. This is a question from Mr. F Mr. Philip Herder. So the, the circuit breaker is is a it's a demonstrator, and and we have built it of course with a promotion project in in mind, mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, the, the, the same the same design can be used also for for uh, empty DC grids or uh, for for general purpose uh, DC DC interruption. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question from Wolfgang Grieshaber from Supergrid Institute. Uh, his question is: What is the short time current withstand of the main branch of this circuit breaker? I think. And what is the closing time, so not the opening time, of the main branch mm. from order to permanent closed contacts? Mm. So first of all, what do you think of the, the short time current withstand capability? And second, what is the closing time? So the first question is related to the pressure on the contacts, I guess, and also yeah. the, the rating of the VI. I do not really remember exactly the rating of the VI, but it's uh, I, I think it uh, this is uh, uh, yeah, that's a short circuit uh, current interrupt okay. capacity. I think this it's, it's, is, it's, uh, a, it's a 38 kV bottle. That is the three 38 kV bottles that are built in now. Uh, yes, and 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 then and the and the, uh, the the overcurrent capacity for for this few seconds that's uh, in the order of 60 kiloamps. Yes, uh, as part of the AC tests for, for, for this circuit, uh, for this bottle. Yes, but we we, we do not uh, an anticipate to 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 use that in as part of a DC grid operation. Yeah, um, when uh, designing um, a super high speed contact separation mechanism, uh, did you uh, uh, include the contact spring as it's normally used in AC operation? It is included, but not as normally. Okay, so it yeah, might be expected that the short circuit current withstand capability is a little lower than in an AC circuit breaker with the same bottle. <clears throat> I think the contact pressure is as, as per the data sheet. So yeah, okay. it, it should okay. be tested, I guess. But okay. uh, it, okay. it's comparable to. Uh, and then regarding the closing speed, uh, this design was not really optimized for a high speed closing operation. I think the current design is it takes around nine milliseconds or so for for it to close. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. Then there is a question for Mr. Ayai. Uh, does delay in breaker operation, uh, was was there a delay of breaker operation between the series connected modules? I think and, Thomas already yeah. asked, answered this. We touched on that. So there was a delay between the modules of 30 and 60 microseconds. And the, the bottommost module was first and then the second. Okay. Yes, that was intentional. Yeah, that was intentional to uh, that way. Uh, the first module takes up almost uh, the full uh, full voltage that it will uh, take up uh, over the search arrestor before the next module uh, starts to take up voltage, and that gives a nicer uh, uh, ramp of the 
voltage seen externally. So for, from the breaker point of view, we could do it all at the, the same instant, but externally it's somewhat nicer to provide a, a low DVDT ramp. Then there is a question on the design of uh, Petr Kopechko. Uh, why the voltage of three stacked modules is 80 kV and not 120 kV if one module is 40 kV? Yeah. <laughs> this is a constant a source for constant confusion, also in the promotion project, I think. If you should speak about breaker TIV or, or the system voltage for which the breaker is suitable. So it's 120 kilovolt TIV on this breaker, but that is suitable for use in an 80 kilovolt grid. So we are talking about counter voltage. Uh, which? About the TIV is a counter voltage. Not oh, yeah. Yes. yes. So. Next question from Ben Marshall again. Uh, with, res with respect to graceful degradation of hybrid breaker, could an integrated control approach be contemplated, whereas failures occurred, DC voltage and power transfers are varied to support to continued breaker operation and operation margin? That is a complicated question, maybe. So if, let's say, we the, the breaker is designed for, for operation at, at uh, with one module faulty, uh, uh, then you don't, uh, then you don't have this, uh, then you don't have a spare module in case that one more module fails. So uh, then, of course, you could design the breaker to have uh, two spare modules or three spare modules or whichever is, is uh, uh, suitable to achieve a high enough uh, confidence in, in operation. Mm -hmm. But in this way, you could have a one, one module uh, staying uh, closed and not used until there are many enough uh, uh, problems that need main maintenance mm -hmm. and this module could be made active uh, if required if such a breaker is desired that's that can be made mm -hmm. uh, mr chang tang uh, what are the main challenges in terms of building a 320 kv dc breaker using several 80 kv modules um, so you, you showed a nice picture of just stacking the modules, but life is not so simple as that, I guess. So first of all, I, I would have to say that we we have not built a 320 kV breaker, so I don't know yet what the main challenges would be. But uh, for one, one thing would be that uh, we would require, I, I believe, we would use another auxiliary power system, so that would require some additional development on our part. We have a uh, we, we, we have a, a design we, which which we would intend to use, but uh, it, it still remains to to build it and test it at high voltage. Okay, I think uh, uh, time is over. Um, there are a few more questions that are on the list, but I well I, I will I will take a, I, I will take a last one because we have one more minute. Uh, Professor Popov from Delft asks, uh, well, he, he comments, very good measurements, thank you, well done, thank you. Um, could, you uh, I, uh, could you have also measured the voltages and the currents of the separate modules? Yes, those are measured by our control system. It's not shown in the, in the KMR measurements, of course, but we have uh, some internal measurements on the currents and the voltages. Yeah. Good. We look at that as, as a black box, so we measure current and voltage from outside. Yes, there, yes there is much more information, of course, on the performance of this breaker, but also on the other two breakers we have tested in the framework of the promotion project. But we are not going to show all of them for us and for the for the for, for the general public. It is important to consider the breaker as a black box that switches off that interrupts a full current in a DC grid. Well, when I look uh, on the clock now, I think it is time to to stop. It's a pity if a few other questions were were uh, were written down that we could not treat, but I think. We need to uh, stop here. Uh, one last announcement. We got a, a message from um, from a few people that uh, uh, they could not log in or something went wrong. 
Um, we will upload the presentation uh, to the promotion uh, website. We are not sure yet whether we make a full recorded uh, version as we have uh, uh, broadcasted today, or that will remain a PowerPoint version. We have to discuss that because that depends on space av available and this type of thing. But please sure you will find back and any of the information in a solid way on the promotion website. And uh, with this, on behalf of uh, the total team, Jens, stand up. Uh, we uh, thank you for uh, attending the test. And uh, if there are some further questions, please feel free to approach any of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, great. Bye. Bye bye.